You can do almost every control that you could on the app in the actual Osmo itself. It's just a lot smaller and you have to know the gestures. You swipe to the left once and then twice and this is where you can get at your resolution settings. Now if you're holding it close to your face, it's too close, right? That's why people were saying it needs a wider angle lens, but just put yourself out there a little bit more. I've just got my arm maybe three quarters of the way outstretched. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. We got some new camera gear, let's check it out. I'm getting into the Osmo Pocket game really late. I skipped it when it first came out. Since then it's had many, many firmware upgrades and now it performs way better than it did when it was new. So we're gonna check it out. The other reason why I went for this is because I've recently sold my Osmo Action. I do have an Osmo Action playlist on my channel where I went through all of the features of that camera from when I first got it to the latest firmware now, as well as all the accessory ecosystem that went with it. But I just found myself never using it. I was always grabbing the GoPros first. So I decided I'm gonna sell that camera because after I had built it out where I made it so it had the frame and the selfie mode and the big microphone and stuff, it just became a little bit unwieldy for an action camera. And I always just grabbed my GoPros first because they were easier and they had better color saturation. So I sold my Osmo Action and I decided, let's try out the Osmo Pocket. Now this is a three axis stabilized gimbal camera and the thing that's different about this versus an action cam is this has a variable focus lens. So it's like your smartphone in that you can actually get depth of field. So you get up close, it'll focus on things up close and then far away and it will focus on things far away. That was also what's kind of its downside out of the box when they first came out is because its focus system wasn't performing the best. Now it's been upgraded where it has phase detect autofocus on some of the latest firmwares as of late 2019 and now it performs way better. Which means that the sensor in this camera always had phase detect but they didn't enable it to begin with so that's a little odd. Anyway, we got to open this up. This is all fully sealed. The products came directly from DJI. I did buy all of these things together in one order and it was during a sale. I did get a little bit of a discount but I just paid full retail like everyone else. No extra deals for me. I did decide to get this Osmo Pocket extension rod. This is an accessory that they announced at the launch almost two years ago but didn't come out until middle of last year, kind of middle 2019 this came out. This is an interesting device is that it is an extendable rod selfie stick with a camera mount with actual joystick controls. If you look at the Osmo Pocket here, you'll see that there's no real physical controls on the front except for two buttons. And that's what this kit does is this kit gives you a little modular piece which gives you a roller wheel with selectable switching for up and down left and right, a clamp for adding on GoPro style accessories, and the Wi-Fi module so you can get at uh, the image quality and settings from your phone. That's the other interesting thing with this is that it does not have Wi-Fi built in. Well, that's a little bit of an annoying thing for something that has a body that size is that there's no Wi-Fi built into it. That was a, a bit of an oversight, I think, when they first came out with it. Added this accessory pretty much immediately afterwards. Let's get it open. Let's start playing with it. Here's the unboxing experience of an Osmo Pocket almost two years after it was announced. But uh, that's the other thing is I'm buying this while it went on sale and I have a feeling that they're gonna that there's going to be a version two coming out soon. Now everything kind of got delayed this year because of all the stuff that's been going on with the pandemic. But uh, I would expect that this product is likely due for a generation two refresh fairly soon. But what this can do now with the upgrades that it has is fairly impressive. So we're gonna check it out. You get a svelte little carrying case with it, but there are so many third-party accessories now that have improved upon this design because there's one thing about this little design is that you cannot fit the Osmo Pocket inside of it uh, and clasp it when you have any of those little accessories plugged into the front. So this is a rubberized texture on this part here. This is a little square screen that you can adjust on how you want your video display, just like the Osmo Action where you could have it as a uh, square or 16 by nine with black bars top and bottom. And then you got a little three axis gimbal on the top. Remove before operating. Okay, there's that. And then under here is these little pins and this is what gives you the modular adaptability of this device. So you can plug in your smartphone to that. There's little accessories that'll be in here. You can plug in your smartphone, your Android phone, or the thumb wheel accessory, or the Osmo Pocket selfie stick. So it sends power and control ability through those pins. It allows me to move the camera gimbal because this is a fully three axis articulating camera that can also track objects. So we'll play with that too. 
The only accessory port for power is on the bottom, USB-C connection on the bottom. This also allows you to plug in a microphone with their adapter. Their adapter is approximately $50 and I did not buy it because again, one of the other things that have improved with this device over the time that it's come out is audio quality out of itself. So I'm just gonna run it for quite some time with just the microphone that's in it and see if it's better or worse than the Osmo Action. From some of the videos that I saw before purchasing this, doing my own product research, I think that this sounds better than the Osmo Action did, even with that Synova microphone adapter, just by itself. And then if I decide I wanna get more audio in the future, we can add that audio adapter. Since this is the only plug that's on the bottom, if you plug in the Wi-Fi module, now you cannot run external audio because that uses that plug. And so it's one or the other. You can have Wi-Fi or you can have external audio. That's it, no other choice. Let's get this thing powered on and get it upgrading. Your box of bits. USB-C charge cable, a lanyard, and these are likely the, yeah, these are the two little accessories. I'm going to need the lightning one. So this is one of the accessories that you get. This is the lightning adapter into the back of the Osmo Pocket. Just like that. And then you can plug your phone into that and it will give you enhanced features by plugging in your phone to the device. You also get a USB-C version of this plug. Now, there are no replaceable batteries on the Osmo Pocket. That also might be a deal breaker for some of you folks. Uh, yeah, no external removable battery. You always have to just plug it in to charge it. The SD card slot is right here, uh, which I forgot to bring upstairs, but let me go grab one and then we'll power it on and pair it with my phone and start the firmware upgrade process. Speaking of SD cards, you actually do get micro SD card with this kit. They don't show it on the package, but I believe you get a 32 gig micro SD card in the Osmo Pocket Accessory Kit, Expansion Kit, if you need one. I'm gonna put in a 64 gig class fast card. <laughs> I can never remember what the name of them are. Oh, it goes the other way. And of all the things they didn't put a label on, they didn't put a label on which way the SD card goes in. There you go. Okay, to the two buttons that are on the front of the device, this one is the power button, the one that's unmarked, so we're gonna power on the Osmo Action. There we go. I call it the Action. It's the pocket. I'm so used to saying Action. Ooh, that's fun. So if you're a long time subscriber on my channel, you'll know that I've had smartphone gimbals for a long time, but I just find myself never using them because they're such a pain. You always have to balance them. The phones keep changing. They keep getting longer and bigger and wider and they don't really fit well anymore. And then the software that's on the phone, either the gimbal's out of date or the software on the phone's out of date, and then they don't play well with each other. So I have a couple of gimbals now and they're not really functioning at the best. So we're gonna try this one, see how this does. This is a touch screen. So English, I guess you tap it, tap it. Now, like all DJI products, you have to activate them. So I have to load up the DJI MIMO app and activate this through their software. iPhone DJI MIMO, and then it should just try and find it automatically. I do not want to be sending data to DJI, no thanks. Okay, Osmo Pocket. T tap here to connect. It's gonna search for it. I'm so used to having Wi-Fi built into the cameras, I was trying to pair it through Wi-Fi. There is no Wi-Fi. I literally have to plug it in. I forgot about that. You literally have to plug it in. Well, and it doesn't fit with my case on. So that's the first thing. My big case doesn't get a good enough connection. So I either need to open up the Wi-Fi module and plug it in, or we're just gonna plug the phone in. For now, I'm just gonna plug the phone in as if you had just bought this and nothing else. Leather case, it's a lot more uh, simple on the back end. Plug this in, and now it's going to ask me to register it. Let's activate your Osmo when you connect it for the first time to receive your warranty. Obtain Osmo device info, activating to my account. We're going to skip Osmo Shield, which is their warranty, and now uh, activation success. Notice for beginners is my only option. It says enter a um, class U3 micro SD card. The Osmo Pocket supports a maximum 256 gigabyte card. Press and hold to power it on. Press once to switch between photo and video mode. Press twice to recenter. Press three times to switch camera between facing front and back. So three times it'll face us and then it swoops around and then if you get it all out of whack you double press to recenter and then one click is camera the other click is video uh, recording start stop recording with the other button you can adjust the camera gimbal manually or use the virtual touch screen oh oh the joystick the okay 
It says that you can adjust this manually, which does work, or you should be able to pan up and down with the touch screen, which is not working yet because we're probably not through to that section yet. Swipe touch screen to access more features. For better audio quality, do not block the microphone, which is right here on the very front. There's right there. There's one on the front, and I believe there's another one on the back. You can do panorama, you can do active tracking, and you can do time lapses. Uh, active tracking means that you can actually track objects, which is pretty awesome, and we will play around with that. It's automatically downloading the newest firmware, which is version 1.10-00-30, optimized phase detect autofocus optimized gimbal performance, and fixed an issue when noise appeared in decent-like video modes. The latest and greatest firmware, which will give me the very best focus ability out of the Osmo Pocket. While it's downloading and upgrading the latest firmware, I just want to show you the accessories that you get. The, uh, the cable is a standard USB 2. It's not a USB 3 cable, if you care. Uh, a lot of people don't, but I do. It'd be nice if you got a USB 3 cable. You don't. USB 2. And then the little lanyard thing is fairly simple. Now I'm just going to open up this accessory kit. Firmware updating, 26%. All right, here's all the little thing. You get an instruction manual booklet in here. And here's the three pack of accessories. It is by far cheaper to buy this. If you think you're even gonna buy one of these things, just get this whole kit because just the Wi-Fi module itself, they price it that way on purpose so that if you just want Wi-Fi and then you ever just wanna have this little gimbal control wheel, um, it's way more expensive to buy these separately than it is just at once. So well, there's the contact patches on, on this up down wheel. It is limited to that range of motion and then two additional buttons. The Wi-Fi module, this older camera just refuses to focus. Come on. Wi-Fi module, USB-C connection, nothing on the bottom other than regulatory information, but it does give you a nicer uh, base for setting the Osmo down. And then this one is just a piece of plastic, but it clamps the Osmo action in. It doesn't have any electronics in it. It just gives you the finger style mount for GoPro style accessories, which I will be doing to get a tripod screw. This is likely the cheapest way that I could do this is just by buying this accessory, which allow me to clamp the Osmo pocket into it, which gives me the fingers. I'm going to do fingers to a GoPro style uh, adapter which has a quarter 20 screw on the back so then I can run it on a normal tripod. In the accessory kit is a Samsung SD card. I believe it's a 32 gig. Yeah. And it's not even what they recommend for speed. In that tutorial they recommended a U3 speed and the one they give you is only U1. That's too bad. It'll still work but not at 4K60. Not very well. We haven't even really started using the thing yet and look at how many accessories I have already that I'm gonna have to manage. So it also is probably a good idea if you're gonna get into the Osmo Pocket ecosystem to get yourself a little case because all these little things, you're, you're gonna wanna be mixing and matching these things around. Like say you wanna run an Android phone on it, then you need this one. If you wanna run it on Wi-Fi, then you need this one. If you wanna have the better gimbal control, then you need this one. If you wanna hook it up to GoPro accessories, you need this one. Um, there's a lot. It's kind of why I hesitated to get into this camera, but uh, now's the time. I sold off my action. We'll play with the pocket. So let's upgrade it. Already upgraded to the latest firmware. That is all done. Uh, and now it's just giving me the tutorial about how you use the uh, how you use the software. So I'm not going to go through all that in this video, but it's fairly complex. You select shooting mode, including pano and time lapse. Slide down here. Oh, it's still going through the tutorial. Tap quickly to just gimbal to the selfie position. Quick access for story, power storage information is up over here. Find it more about shooting gimbals and settings down here. Glamour effects is off. Anti-flicker is set at 60 hertz. Video format is set to MP4 and grid lines are off. I always like grid lines being on, so I will add them. Uh, and then it's immediately telling me how to active track something. Drag a box around it and now it's automatically gonna keep that. Now it's automatically gonna keep that in the frame all by itself. So the goal of getting a robot cameraman, we're gonna play with that long term with this device, try and chase some RCs around and stuff, see how it works. For modes, you get a video mode, a photo mode, a panel mode, a story mode. <laughs> okay. A slow motion mode, a time lapse mode, and one of the newest things they added was hyperlapse, hyperlapse mode, and then easy share. So those are all the modes that are in the app. First time use, I'm actually gonna just run the camera by itself and I want to see how is that experience. So first of all, you need to figure out how you control it based on this screen. Swipe down. Yeah, swipe down for settings. Batteries at 23%. Tilt control is on. Quality. 
super fine we do want super fine so it's just tap 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 to get it to the quality level that you want settings this one is for if you want the full frame in the shot or not i do want the full frame in the shot this is autofocus single autofocus continuous which is what you would normally want for video pro mode we want to turn on pro mode this will allow me to get additional settings here tap the pro mode settings now i actually have uh, exposure control volume control whoops what else is in here manual color decent alike normal decent alike auto white balance and then adjustability there Gonna leave that on auto. Exposure settings and volume settings is in pro mode. Okay, how do I get at quality? Wanna change it to 1080p 60 is really what I want. Brightness, gimbal control, haven't figured that one out yet. In the settings menu, uh, you get four grids per screen. You just swipe over to get an additional four and then there's a more and then you get a little bit more information here. Still have not found where you change video quality uh, resolution. Swipe left to change your modes between photo, video, slow. You can do almost every control that you could on the app in the actual Osmo itself. It's just a lot smaller and you have to know the gestures. Swipe from the right to get at your gallery view of things you've already recorded. Swipe from the top down to get in the settings. Swipe from the bottom up to get at uh, additional controls. What's this one? Let's flip the camera around. Uh, this one is to recenter. This one is fast follow or slow follow, and this one is tilt locked, FPV, or follow mode. All right, that's everything I want to be able to change except for quality, resolution. I have to figure that one out. All right, as a fairly tech savvy person, I could not figure this out. I had to look it up. So it's swipe. I also didn't read any of the books, so my bad. But in order to change the resolution out of the box, it comes at 1080p 30. In order to change the resolution, you swipe to the left once and then twice. And this is where you can get at your resolution settings. So we have 1080p 60, 2.7K 6x9, 4K 6x9. I typically, on most GoPros, I love 2.7K 60 because I can edit it. So I'm gonna play around with that top spec performance though. 4K 60, 60 frames a second. I wanna see, can you still do facial tracking? Tracking unavailable at 4K60. All right, it just told me that. So you cannot do 4K60 face tracking. That's unfortunate. Uh, can I do object tracking? Cannot track objects at 4K60. Let me try some additional resolutions. Uh, let's go down to 2.7K60. Flipping. Can I do face tracking? Face track is on. All right, I can face track at 2.7K. Oh, it's dark because it's exposed for the window, not my face. I can do facial tracking at 2.7K 60, which is awesome. So that's excellent. Uh, that also means that I can probably do object tracking at 2.7K 60. All right, I realized I have not even recorded a clip yet, so let's do that now. All right, this is the first clip ever on the Osmo Action. I have it set at 2.7K 60 frames a second on the latest and greatest firmware uh, as of June, no, July 2020. And, uh, and it is set for facial tracking. So now I can just move myself around and it'll auto track to my face. Um, this is about two feet from my face. This is fully arm outreached. I remember people saying all along that the Osmo Pocket has too tight of a lens. But if you have your arm fully outstretched, it seems acceptable. It's got a lot of my body in the frame, actually. Uh, that seems all right, but audio, how's audio this far away versus if you were just going to vlog normally, you might want to hold it up this close. But if I flip this around, three presses, now I'm flipping the camera around and we're panning over some of the accessories here that we got. How's the focus quality? It's very hard to tell if it's locking on focus. How close can I get? Not sure. That looked like it grabbed focus pretty quick. Nice. And there's you as the camera. Okay, so I can do object tracking in 2.7K 60 frames a second when I've got the phone plugged in. I just don't know how to activate that mode on the Osmo itself yet. So that's pretty cool. camera can track me as I move about. It has, it has object tracking. Testing it. And then we'll flip around here, we'll get onto my face, and uh, it automatically locked focus onto my face without me having to do anything. 
And uh, yeah, so we'll see how that works out. I'm just moving around here. Subject lost. I'm in frame. What are you talking about? That's the benefit of the Osmo Pocket is the depth perception that you can get because it has real focusing camera uh, optics in it. So this is fully arm outstretched. It doesn't look that bad, but I'm curious to hear what the audio is like. Nice. Then we'll take it outside and see what the quality is like in good lighting. All right, this is the first ever outdoor test with my Osmo Pocket, and uh, I'm just under my little porch area here. It is a little windy. There's wind blowing right at it, and I've got, it's about maybe two and a half feet away from my face. Camera has about 30% power. I've just briefly plugged it in just enough to do this little test because I want to end this video soon because there's so much in this camera and so many accessories to talk about. We're going to do follow-ups on it. Mostly, I've just got it set up. I've got it in a resolution that I like, 2.7K, 60 frames a second. And uh, we're just going to do a little test here of uh, of just walking around a little bit. So walking backwards, walking forwards, it lost my face. It's going to re-try and capture my face. Face tracking is back on again. Exposure is looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, so this is the quality you can get by just walking around. Pretty darn good, I think. So I'm curious on what the audio is going to be like. Now, if you're holding it close to your face, it's too close, right? That's why people were saying it needs a wider angle lens. But just put yourself out there a little bit more. I've just got my arm maybe three quarters of the way outstretched. And it looks great to me on camera. So we're going to see how does this work out and about. So let's uh, swing the camera around now. Flip it around. And I've got it on what I believe is the follow mode. And we'll flip this back around in my face and it will automatically face track me. At least it should. No face detected because it's got the sun. The sun. So now we should be on face track in a minute. Still doesn't have my face. Come on, pick up my, oh, because it's got a hat on, there. It's a little bit inconsistent for picking up the face, but you can just watch it because it gives you a green box over the camera and then you know what's happening. Probably should just go and take some videos of my van and see what that looks like when I try and get some close-up shots of some stuff. All right, here's my little camper van. I'm just gonna do a little shot here. Also, there's a noisy truck driving by, towing a trailer. I've got it on slow follow mode. You can speed that up, but it would be a little bit jerky. So I think quality wise, this is looking pretty good. Just be careful about how you're walking. It's nice that you've got the screen where you can view it. <clears throat> Alrighty guys, we're gonna end it here. Uh, I will follow up on additional accessories, additional items that you can do in the software. And then I'm just gonna give you an overall impression later on as I make a couple more videos about the Osmo Pocket. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. There's a heavy truck going by now, and uh, we'll see. How does it sound? Is it picking up my voice okay? It's not very windy right now, but there's a lot of background noise, and we're using the inboard microphones, because remember, I have not bought the accessory to do external microphones. So we're going to see how does this device just sound by itself. Hopefully, it's pretty good. Can you see? You probably can't. I'm using just the camera itself. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. What are we doing, Dougie? What are we doing, Dougie? What are we doing? Hey. Oh, silly, you're so close. Do not operate while shooting. What? What do you mean, do not operate while shooting? What does that mean? Pretty Dougie. Don't forget to always shoot in manual. You must be shooting in manual with the Osmo Pocket. So you are in complete control of the Osmo Pocket. I do have a video explaining how to shoot manual in the Osmo Pocket with some cinematic settings. So you can click the link here or in the link in the description below. So check that video out as well. Okay. It's too fast. It's too fast. Bring it in that close. You don't have any zoom, so you have to get physically close.
Good dog.